My work area is blooming with tons of ideas for flowers as gifts. I hope I plant some seeds which will inspire you to gift your friends or loved ones. I thought I'd begin by preparing a hyacinth container. This is an old piece I picked up at a garage sale, and I begin by adding this very rich and dark soil into the container. It's important that you use a loose soil. This will allow the bulbs to begin to root in it. So I'm filling the container about halfway to the top and I'm just spreading it around to make sure that it's distributed well all along the pot. Next I take hyacinth bulbs. They're this interesting color. They've got a nice crimson color and I begin by placing them in a pattern. The container has an interesting shape and you'll see that it'll create a very pleasing design so that when they bloom they'll look very very attractive. These bulbs are now safely nestled in their bed in this old container. We're back to the soil and I'm going to add another layer of soil but not completely covering the bulbs. You just want to see the tips of the bulbs remain. So I'm going to spoon in the soil and now I'll go back in with my hands. I'm going to distribute it all around the pot making sure that the tips of the bulbs are sticking up out of the soil. This is a, a sheet moss and look at how wonderful. It's very spongy and I'm just going to add a layer of sheet moss over the bulbs. It rips apart into smaller pieces so you can start to play with the moss and again make sure that the tips of the bulbs remain exposed between the pieces of the sheet moss. And You can see that in no time I have a gift already prepared. And I know that as soon as I gift the person, they'll say, hey, Nick made this for me. And I think that's half of the, the goal is to offer an expression like that. The bulbs are peeking through. It's a nice layer of moss. And I'm going to quickly dust off the table. And then I'll show you how I'll present this because it's not just going through the motions of preparing it. It's also how you finally give it to your friends. I'm taking a sheet of cellophane wrap. I begin the process of assembling the gift. So I now place the container in the center. This cellophane always comes in handy and it's available in a spectrum of colors. You can get clear, yellow, green, blue, pink. I always pick up all kinds of different rolls of this paper because you never know when you'll need it. I'm simply gathering the four corners and I thought I'd use a ribbon which will complement the bowl to tie an attractive bow. Very quickly, there's the bow, give it a knot, loop, loop, tie it up, and then just pull the bow to make sure that it's nice, nicely displayed. I could also attach a little card that says, hey, from me to you, as an expression of thanks or just as well wishes. Another thing to remember when you're packaging bulbs, you don't want to wrap them too far in advance because you'll see that the moisture starts to condense and form on the inside of the packaging. So I'm almost ready to go and gift this person, so I've wrapped it up now before I leave. There's one down, but I've got tons of ideas still to come. Here's a gift sure to bring some sunshine into someone's life. I begin with a planter box. It's very sturdy, and this is more for outdoors. We're going to be doing a sunflower presentation, so I want something that can reflect and also allow the sunflower to stay outside. So I picked up the sunflowers in these containers, and I want to take them out. A quick squeeze of this piece of plastic allows me to remove the sunflowers. In thinking about this, I thought I would put one sunflower facing this way and one facing that way, but then you got to remember that the sunflowers always move with the sun, so it doesn't matter which direction I place them in. Before you know it, they'll all be facing the same way. Now, there's not a lot of room left here. I've got a little bit of room, so that last sunflower, I'm going to need to almost jam into the box but that's okay because I'm also going to top it off with the the soil you'll also notice that I've placed spikes into the sunflower so I just want to show you very quickly this last one goes in I'm keeping them at an even height the raffia is not necessarily an important part of growing sunflowers but I thought it was a really nice decoration so I'm just tying them and then a quick little loop in the back like so. So you've got this nice row, the raffia is sprigging through the sunflowers and I think it looks pretty nice. Now I'll go to the soil and we're just going to fill in between the pots. Forget the scoop, let's just get right into it and I'm just going to pour this in with my hands and it's just a little bit of soil just to fill it up and a little bit more. Looking pretty good. 
Actually, it looks great. Isn't that attractive? The soil also, because it's so dark, it really reflects the center of the sunflowers. I'm just going to add a little bit more. I'm always a hands-on kind of person, so I don't have a problem in getting my hands dirty, especially when I'm making a gift for someone. I think it's all a part of that labor of love. So I'll place this in. Now, it still is looking, I'll have to clean this off, it's still looking a little bare, so I thought we'd use some more of our sheet moss, and again, just place it into the bottom, lifting up the leaves of the sunflower. This time, you'll notice I'm not ripping the moss, I'm simply placing it on top. It's going to add a protective coating. I'm sure you also know that sunflowers need a lot of water, so this is good because the moist soil will prevent the sunflowers from drying out in case my friend doesn't get a chance to water them right away. And I'm really big on the whimsical look, so I'll let a little bit of the moss trail down. So that wasn't a very difficult project. This I can wipe off. I took a nice piece of yellow envelope papers and I put some sunflowers in. I thought I'd just attach them to this with a clothespin. I think that's kind of in keeping with the look of this. And that's just in case the sunflowers don't make it all the way to the end of the season, they'll be able to plant some fresh ones for next year. I'm not going to wrap this gift in the cellophane. I'm simply going to present it like this along with an expression of sun into someone's life. As always on Savoir Faire, the ideas are endless. Here's an antique wrought iron pot filled with ivy. This container has an interesting story. It has gone back and forth between a friend and I so many times I've lost count. The last time she gifted me with crocus, I handed back to her this time filled with African violets. Brilliant gerberas in a birch container are also an attractive way of saying, hey, I love you, with flowers. <laughs>